To open up Projection Zones, go to Settings, Projection Zones. Here, we set up destinations for our content and assign those destinations to output hardware. To do this, we are given many different features for positioning, routing, previews, and safety. On the top, we have buttons to open and save entire zone settings or create a new one. We can save this as default settings, add zones, and delete them. For safety, we have a brightness fader, and next to that, we have a copy button. All the way to the right, you can also click Show It Now to enable Preview Live with lasers. Above those buttons, there is more options related to saving, view options, and more. On the left side, we have a list of all of the projection zones, showing its name, its selected hardware, the serial number for that selected hardware, and the name for that hardware if it has one. Here you can see what it looks like if a zone is assigned to connected hardware, and here for disconnected hardware. On the left side, you can also mute the zone so it doesn't do anything at all. And on the right side, you have two boxes you can select for two different types of test patterns. You can click to enable. For it to be on lasers for real, you do have to have show it now pressed from earlier. On the right side, we have a bunch of tabs for different parameters for each zone. The most important ones to note for real life setup and positioning are the general tab, geometric tab, and beam attenuation map. Other things we can control about the zones are its preview, its routing, advanced features, adding effects, and distribution of content. Under the general tab, you can give your zone names or rename a zone by adding a name, changing its position, and deleting the old name. You can also have multiple names for a zone if you'd like to reference to older content. Below that, we can select which output hardware we want this zone to be assigned to. Under geometric correction, we can correct our zone how we want. First, we'll turn the brightness down all the way, then enable a test pattern and slowly bring it up until we can see our zone. It's always a good idea to use as little brightness as needed during setup. Now, we can click Universal Geometric Correction and start to zone using our size, our position, rotation, linearity, symmetry, keystone, pincushion, bow, and shear. Now, if we need to improve this zone even more, we can then go to Freeform Mesh and modify the zone by meshing it into position. You can also decide if you want to calculate Freeform Mesh first or the normal geometric correction first. It's recommended you use Freeform Mesh first, and this is the most common among users. Next, we can use the beam attenuation map if we have somewhere within our zone that we want the lasers to turn off for. This is useful if you want to block out a reflective area within your zone, or if you want to mask out things like video projectors from your zone. Before we start blacking out an area, we need to decide if we want our map to be within our geometric correction or over the entirety of the projector's capable area. Click Geometric Correction after BAM if you want to be within the zone. And when you move the zone, the, you'll also move your beam attenuation map. Select BAM after geometric correction if you don't want your BAM to move if you move your geometric correction. Once we have made that decision, we can enable beam attenuation map for this zone and prepare to draw. On the left we have new, copy to other zones, copy and paste. Then the pencil tool, spray can tool, eyedropper tool, paint can, solid square, and gradient squares. On the bottom, we can select which brightness we want to draw with. On the right, we can also enable our cursor, which will show where your mouse is in real life in laser. We can enable our laser cursor, and let's block out an area of our zone. Then we can also try and do a gradient upward from the bottom. You can also see these live happening in the zone as we draw it. Now that we have set up our zone in laser and done our safety settings, we can take a look at some of the other options. Under the preview tab, we can adjust how the zone will be seen within the preview window, and we can view it as graphics or beams, and even ena enable scanner simulation. We can change its size, position, and rotation of the zone itself, change the beam diameter, and even change the position of the projector point source within that space. On the right, we can see how it looked in our preview window and within our enhanced reality preview. 
By using Preview, you can write an entire complex laser shows just using the Preview window and Enhance Reality Preview without having to worry about setting it up in real life or in a 3D way. Next, we have also two. You can use this to either bind zones together, so when you select one zone, it'll also go out to the other zones. Here you can add those names. You can also use this to stitch content onto multiple zones by enabling the window and resize positioning and modifying the space. This is often used for very large scale projections over large areas like a sports stadium field. Next, we have the effect tab. You can use this to add any effect inside the Beyond effect engine to an entire zone. Most of the time, this is used for filters like delete dark lines. Distribution is used to take multiple projectors to scan the same image at the same time by dividing the content up between projectors. In theory, taking two projectors to create one zone that can do twice the number of points per second. This you can use to lower the flicker of complex images. You would first line up two zones using geometric correction that enable distributed scanning on your first zone. Then, on the first zone, you would add a slave zone. This will then start to distribute the content on the two projectors. You must use FB4 controllers for this feature. Lastly, we have the Advanced tab. We have a couple of selections for advanced users to select. The average user should not have any of these first beam-related check marks selected. Then, we have External Visualization, where you can assign which fixture number for that software you want this zone to go to. Then, in Beyond Server Mode, you can set up DMX control of each individual zone from a console. This is very advanced and is covered in another video. Thank you for watching our Quick Hints video on projection zones. If you still need support, you can contact our support line, or if you have time, you can watch our deep dive video on global settings. Thank you for watching.